Legends of Location, we are going to continue our quest for Google Place greatness. We are going to code a Google Place autocomplete lookup feature. We're going to return and interpret a GMS Place object. And we're going to work with a nil coalescing operator. Let's get at it. So if your browser isn't already open to the Google autocomplete documentation, you can open your browser and search for Google Place Autocomplete iOS Swift. And again, you can click on that first link. And the link on the left that we want to click on is the one that says get an API key. Then if you scroll down on this page, you can see there are a few things that we need to do with the app delegate.swift file. First, we've got to import Google Places up top of that file. Then we need to paste in this line that I'm going to highlight right here, this GMS Places Client .provide API key. And then where it says your API API key. That's where we're going to use that special static let constant that we created in the struct in our previous video. So highlight this line, command C, return to our weather gift app, click on app delegate.swift. That should be right near the top in the project navigator. Under import UI kit, we'll type in another import for Google places, then go down in this first function. That's this one that says did finish launching with options. You can get rid of the green comment that's in there and then replace that with the line that we just copied. So Command V to paste that in. Then get rid of everything between the two parentheses. So we're not gonna type in a string literal, so I'll backspace to delete the two double quotes and everything inside it. Instead, we're gonna use the static let constant that we created. So in between the empty parentheses, we're gonna type in API keys. You see it shows up, it's a struct. Now again, because we used static let, we don't need to create an instance of this struct, so we don't need to create a variable or a constant for the struct. We can just refer to the type because of static let. Then we type dot, and code completion knows that there's a constant in here called Google Places key. Press return to accept this. Nice. Now we're going to enter the code for Google Places, and most of it we're going to copy right out of Google's documentation. So we're going to enter this code into our location list view controller.swift. So click that file in the project navigator. Then let's head back to our Google documentation in the browser, and we want to click here on the left hand side the link that says Places Autocomplete. Now we're going to do three things from this documentation. One is that we're going to import Google Places autocomplete just with an import statement. The second is we're going to grab some code that's going to execute when the user clicks on the add location button. Then finally, we're going to grab the whole extension that's on this page too. And we'll only need to make a few modifications to this code that we'll get from Google. So the first bit of code that we want is going to be in this first block of code on this places autocomplete page. That's the one that is preceded by this line that says the following example demonstrates one possible way to launch GMS autocomplete view controller. So that's where we want to be. We're not going to use all the code in here, but we are going to import Google places. So you can either copy that or type it right in. So I'll just highlight command C to copy, head back over to Xcode and in location list view controller.swift. I'm going to paste that right under my UI kit import statement. Then head back to that documentation in the browser. And we want to find this line that's got the code that's going to execute when the user clicks a button. Now this Google code has got a bunch of extra code that we don't want for programmatically creating a button. We created our button on the storyboard, so we don't need that. And because they created a button programmatically, they have this obj-c function in here. We actually don't need that wrapper. We're just going to take the code that's inside of this and place that in our IB action. So what you want to do is you want to find this objective C function in here that starts with at obj C. It's the func autocomplete clicked. So highlight everything between this function's curlies, all of those lines, command C to copy them. Then let's return to Xcode. Let's scroll down and find the IB action that you created that you named add button pressed, and then paste the code we just copied between these two curlies. Now you can ignore the error we're getting up top where we set the autocomplete controller dot delegate to self. We're going to fix that when we paste in an extension in just a bit, but highlight these other two blocks of code just below that line. Then command slash to comment those out. Now those lines would filter some of the information that we could get from Google and the fields that we got back. We don't want any restrictions. We want it to retrieve any information that the user types in. So we can get the location on any physical place, street, city, no restrictions. So what we should have between the curlies that's not commented out are just three lines. Up top there's a let line, there's the autocomplete controller dot delegate line, and that error will go away in a bit. And then we've got the present line down below. Everything else should be commented out. Then we're going to enter an extension so you can scroll to the bottom of this and position your cursor just after the last curly. We'll return to our browser, then scroll down just a little bit in the same gray block of code. And you can see the extension in here. It says extension view controller, GMS autocomplete view controller delegate. You want to highlight that entire extension. So from this start line with the extension all the way through the last curly, command C to copy this then head back over to Xcode, paste the extension in, then we get a bunch of errors. They all stem from one problem. Can you guess what it is? 
that first error that we have up here in extension, it's got the little underline right underneath view controller and the underline points us to a problem. And oh yeah, we're not inside a view controller. Our view controller is named location list view controller. So just change view controller to location list view controller. That error goes away. And now that we fix the extension name, all of the other errors go away too. We've got three warnings in here. Google by default just shows that it can print values that it's getting back from Google places. Ignore those for now, but no Notice in the function call, just above where those warnings are, we have a parameter in this function called place, and that's of type GMS place. Now a GMS place is a special Google defined class that we get as part of the Google places library that has a bunch of different properties for different place characteristics. And you can find the reference for the GMS place class just by doing a search on Google for GMS place class Swift. And you can see the information that we have in here. Down here are listed a bunch of different properties. So the dot name property is the name of the place. There's a place ID. There's coordinates, which is a longitude and latitude. You have phone number, formatted address. So lots of information which is in here. What we want is simply the name and we'll get the longitude and latitude from the coordinate. So we can use the properties that are inside of this place value that we're getting back to create a new weather location value. So let's create a constant for that right now. We'll say let new location equals and then capital weather location open parenthesis and then it wants three values in here. Remember, this is the struct that we created. So under name, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in place and then when you press dot, look in dot notation, you can see all of those different properties in there. We want the name property. Now also notice that it's possible that there isn't a name for the place that you're searching for. And because of that, place doesn't return a straight string, it returns an optional. See the string question mark? So if that's the case, what we want to do is we want to provide an option in case we get back nil. So I'm going to type a space and then question mark, question mark, and then another space. Now this question mark, question mark is what's called the nil coalescing operator. And what that does is it says, hey, if the thing on the left hand side of this double question mark is not a nil, then go ahead and use that value as an unwrapped optional. So you don't have to do the exclamation point or anything but if we do get nil on the left side of these double question marks then we can put a value on the right side to use in case of a nil so in double quotes here I'm just gonna put unknown place in here so again if we get a value that's not nil we'll use place.name but if place.name returns a nil then this will automatically put unknown place in there then I'll tab over to latitude and I'll type in place.coordinate. Now notice what coordinate says in code completion. It says CL location coordinate 2D. So this is an Apple standard type. It says it's the location of a place. The CL stands for Apple's core location library. You'll learn more about this when we want to try to find the location of the device. So press return to accept this. But what's neat is coordinate has a dot latitude and dot longitude property. So we'll do dot latitude here. Press return to accept the latitude in degrees. Then we'll tab over and we'll do pretty much the same thing. Place dot coordinate dot longitude. So this lets us grab information from this place value, the object of the class type GMS place, convert it to our struct, this weather location struct. We just need the three values, name, latitude, and longitude. And now that we've got a new location, we're just going to append that onto our weather locations. So on this next line here, just weather locations dot append, and then in parentheses, our new location. Now this next bit is really important because if you didn't do this, you wouldn't see any of the changes. We need to call table view dot reload data. And now just to make sure that we can see our locations, we're not gonna normally print out the longitude and latitude coordinates, but to make sure that we're getting something back, why don't we update our main storyboard and change our cell style so that it can show subtitles, and then we'll put the longitude and latitude in the subtitle. So click on main storyboard, then click on the cell, make sure you've got the cell and not the content view. And then in the attribute inspector, under style, select subtitle, we get that extra detail line below. And now we can access that inside of our cell for row at in our table view extension. So let's head back to location list view controller, scroll down into our table view extension and find the cell for row at function. And then right underneath where we have the cell for row at dot text label, let's do cell for row at dot, remember what this is called, detail text label, question mark, dot text equals and then inside of here why don't we do some string interpolation so we'll put in double quotes and we'll just say lat colon string interp 
comma long colon string and chirp and then inside of the string and chirp after lat we'll say weather locations bracket index path dot row close bracket dot latitude and then in the second string and chirp put weather locations bracket index path dot row bracket dot longitude then i'll just choose an iphone in the scheme for the simulator and build and run here we go no errors we've got our three dummy values in here let's click on add location oh and i'm going to head over to eastern russia so i'm going to type in habarovsk K H A B. There it is, Habarovsk, Russia. I'm gonna click on that, and whoa, we load another value into the table view, and look, we got the longitude and latitude in here as well. Let's add another value in here. How about Boston, my hometown? There we go, and click on that. Latitude and longitude again, a different one. Perfect. That is the correct coordinates for Boston. Let's click on add location again, and I'm gonna type in Sydney, the lovely city in Australia. Click on that, and there we get Sydney's latitude and longitude. Dude. Perfect. Now down here in the console, we're getting a bunch of things that are printing out. Those are actually the result of the three print statements that are in the Google extension that we copied over. And the warnings just warn us that those are optional values and they need to be unwrapped, but we don't need these values. Highlight those three lines that have the warnings on them and backspace over them and delete them. And while we're at it, why don't we head over to our add button pressed and delete the stuff that we commented out there that would have provided a filtering, but we don't want to filter any of the results that we're getting back. If you want to experiment with that, there's plenty of documentation online, but we don't need this extra code. So delete, it's gone. And just to show you, we're not limited to cities in here. So, uh, oh, I've got a hankering for barbecue. So if I head back over to my app and click on add location, my favorite barbecue place in Boston currently is a place called the Smoke Shop. If I type in smoke shop, I can see there is the smoke shop in Seaport. There are also a couple of other smoke shops in there. I could click on that. There's the longitude and latitude of the smoke shop. Nice. Swifter, you should feel good about your skills. You are now the ladies and lords of location. Keep at it.